I don't know, I just, I had a lot of opinions, I don't, yeah, mm hmm right, yep, okay, so, yeah, that's where we are. Hey guys. Hey everybody. Welcome, Welcome back to, to The, the Drunken, Drunken Library. Library. <laughs> in case you don't remember, I'm Sam. I'm Amber. And, uh, we haven't done this in a while. A long ass time. It's been a, it's been a minute. Uh, so Ooh. we, uh, we recently, Buddy read a book. We did. With Sue from Spinebreakers. Indeed. Um, and we decided we'd come here to talk about it. It was this one. <laughs> yes, it is called The Hole by uh, Hiroko <laughs> Oyamata. I was like, I know I know it. I, I know you know it too. <laughs> <laughs> I sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyway, so this motherfucker. <laughs> Is that the author, or is that like the character, or is that like the whole story? I think story? it's the book. The book is really what I was just getting the at. Essence. Yeah, this motherfucker. This motherfucker. Right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it was really something. I guess we should probably go into like what it was about, if anybody could tell you, because like I don't know that I could. <gasps> Man, I, I don't even. I have like theories about stuff I think are important. Yeah. So like, but I don't when, know what it means. Like when we initially read it, the like premise that sold us, I think, was it mm -hmm. was like. Japanese modern day like Alice, Alice in Wonderland, Wonderland story. Yeah. Um I don't know that I would really describe it as that. I wouldn't at all. No. Uh I really wanted it to be that. Same. Um and it it wasn't there was a no. hole. Like the book is called The Hole. There was a hole. But there's a lot of holes there actually. There are, but like the only one that was really relevant was only there for like a couple pages. Yeah. And then And then like nothing anymore. happened. Nothing it at all. It was just like, "Oh, I fell in this hole." Uh, and now I'm out of it. So yeah, like, and what, what, the hole that was, like, the hole was the one she fell into. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and that's then what she, I would consider the hole. Yeah, and it was because she saw this animal that she couldn't quite describe. It was black and had a lot of fur. Yeah, and I just kept picturing, like, a large dog. <laughs> yeah, I was, ex I was, I kept picturing, like, a, like, a weird, like, I don't know why, but I feel like it was, like, a rabid, like, rabbit raccoon. And I think that might be because you were still in the Alice in Wonderland mindset, and Probably. it was like a rabbit that led her down the hole. Probably. Because, like, the way that it was described was not really, like, anything specific mm -hmm. at all. Uh, just an animal that was just black. Just an animal that was black and had, like, fangs and, like, oh, a yeah, lot of fur. Fangs. And that was really Yeah. It. Later um, we find out it had horns, too. Yeah, we did learn that later. I, yeah. like, totally forgot that happened, so... <laughs> Listen, a lot happened. It's a very tiny ass book. Yeah, it's like very short. But like a lot happened real quick. Yeah, like nothing happened for like two thirds of the book. And then, then a lot happened. Everything happened in All at like once. a very short span of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have no attention span, weirdly enough, for a short book, it might not be the one for you. Yeah, <laughs> I can't disagree. Um, but yeah, so basically, this book, we follow Asa. And she is a woman in Japan, and she's married, and she's just, like, really unsatisfied with her life. Yeah, it's not that she's, like, actively dissatisfied, but right. it's more like she's just, like, fucking bored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, everything is just kind of meh. Like, every single yeah, thing. Like she doesn't care about her job. She doesn't care about, like, she doesn't really have any hobbies mm -mm. or passions. She doesn't seem to have, like, a whole lot of opinions about her husband. No, like, he's kind of just there. there. <laughs> yeah. Um, at first, I did not care for him. I think it was more cultural differences, though, because, like, yeah, that... it was just a lot of, like, oh, he expects this, 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 this and this mm -hmm. from his wife, and, like, that is, that, that is... shit would not fly in my household. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <sighs> There was like, I don't remember what I was saying. I have no idea where you were going with that, so <laughs> can't help. Oh, I know. I know. I figured it oh, out. Nice. Yes. Good. Asa was unhappy with her life, and then all of a sudden her husband says, hey, we need to move. Yeah, he gets like a promotion or gets transferred to a new yeah, office or whatever. It's something. not really important. Yeah. Something that facilitated them needing to move. Yeah, and then they move into this house that like her husband's parents own, own and it's like next door to their house mm -hmm. um that she never knew this house was even there apparently yeah she'd like never even heard them talk about it or anything so like that's 
a little kind of weird right off the bat, mm -hmm. but they move into this house and her mother-in-law is like, you guys don't have to pay rent. It's totally fine. Like everything's cool. Just mm -hmm. come live here, which like to me is like automatically just a red flag. His mother like really gave me some vibes. <laughs> she had some vibes, but I think it was like, I think it was just the like extreme juxtaposition between like her caring way too much and also caring zero percent about anything yes yeah. exactly you're not wrong and like i feel like the whole thing about the mother-in-law whose name i for sure don't remember i don't know i started with an m i think or an h <laughs> i thought it was an h it's probably an h it was a woman's name it was a woman's <laughs> name a japanese woman's name so was the name take that how you will yes <laughs> so she was like a wife a mother and a working woman and like yeah she was like the woman who has it all yeah and like does it all mm -hmm. and like asa i think like kept comparing herself to her yeah for sure and she like never quite felt like she was doing enough life correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah she's just like i don't know is that the way to do it am i i don't know if i'm doing it right but like i'm not unhappy to not have all this no stuff. she was very okay with just like letting life happen to her yeah it 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 kind of got weird at this point. Yeah, at this point it started to get like a little weird. strange. Yeah. Like she was just kind of living her life just like day to day. And like at one point she's at this convenience store. I think that was when she was running that errand yeah, for her mother-in-law. Yeah, she was running an errand to for her deposit money, which she didn't have enough for, and she covered the difference, which was yeah, like she $200. Yeah, she took like half of her savings or something crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was like $200. So, but then she had to like step over all these kids, and there was this guy. They kept calling him sensei. Mm-hmm. Then she left there. She fell into a hole. Like, this person who was apparently her neighbor Yeah. And showed up and helped her out of the hole. Yeah. Just like out of nowhere. Yeah. And then she just shows up at the house one day like, I've got this vegetable. Honestly, that's what confused me. Yeah. I think it's a ghost, but I can't, I can't I, say yeah, sure I don't that it's know. a ghost. Like, it might have been a ghost, but it might have just been, like, everybody's imagination. Uh-huh. Like, if, if things with, like, Japanese literature track, it's, like, probs a ghost. It's probs a ghost. It's probs a ghost. So, like, apparently, her brother, her husband, had a brother. <laughs> her brother, her husband, her brother. <laughs> Uh, no, the husband had a brother. She had a brother-in-law. Which nobody knew about. Yeah, nobody ever mentioned him. He was just, like, the guy you never talk about. Yeah, except like for apparently the neighbor. Like, that weird cousin that nobody mentions. <laughs> and, like... And if you don't have one of those in your family, you're that cousin. So... <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> so we had some technical difficulties. That we did. We haven't done this in a while. It's been a bit. My camera didn't charge. I got more beer. Everything is broken. Mm -hmm. Except for that Amber got more beer. That I'm happy about. <laughs> Everything's cool in that regard. Honestly, if the camera was gonna die randomly, I'm glad it did it right when I needed more beer. I mean, like, otherwise you could have just gotten up and gotten more beer, but like, I mean. It's fine. We're cool. If, Everything's it, fine. But if it was gonna die anyway. Yeah, no, you're, you're not wrong. It was courteous enough to do so when I needed more beer. And we were talking about the guy who might have been a ghost. But we're not sure. Yeah, we think he was probably a ghost. Probs. The the neighbor lady talked about like a random name. Mm -hmm. She didn't know who he was. Nope. She was just like, okay, that was weird, whatever, moving on. Yep. And then like a couple days, I think, later. Something like that, yeah. I don't know the time frame. But then she was like out in the yard and mm -hmm. she saw this guy and it was the same guy yeah. from the convenience store that the kids were calling sensei. Yeah, and she's like, why are you in my yard? <laughs> and he was just like, I'm your brother-in-law. And she was like, duh fuck. Like, then where were you this yeah. whole time? Why weren't you at our wedding, bitch? You should have bought us a blender. <laughs> yeah. And now you're just like, oh, hey, now we can be family because we live next door to each other and I live in a shed behind the parents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, that's a thing. I'm like, the only people he ever talks to are children. And, like, kind of, okay. Kind of fucking creepy. Yeah. To well, be honest. So here, here's my thing. I was like, I could buy that he's a ghost, right? Sure. But my question is, then why does he only talk to children? If he's a ghost, I'm like, are the children the only ones who can see him? Is it like one of those things, oh god, what is I, the Santa Claus where like, where you stop believing and then you can't see them anymore? I was thinking that. The other thing I was thinking is, what if all of the children that he was hanging out with and are also, also ghosts? I was wondering if they were also ghosts and he's like a guide, which could also involve like the, him being the sensei. Sure. But sure. I'm also like... Well, and, and actually that would make sense, too, because at the end of the book, when, like, Asa goes to start working at the convenience store, mm -hmm. she's like, oh, what about all the kids? And she's like, what are you talking about? Everybody who lives here is retired. Yeah. 
Like there's so never like there any are no kids. There, so like ever. maybe those kids were never there. So either they were also ghosts or they were imaginary, which like honestly could also be a thing. Yeah. And it, it was like really slapped myself <laughs> aggressively. Way to go, Sam. Way I to know, go. Right? So we've got this brother who may or may not be a ghost and a bunch of kids who may or may not be ghosts. But yeah, so so there's a grandpa and then he dies. Yeah, after he like has this whole thing where he like runs off in the middle of the night and Asa's the, the only one who notices and yeah. she like chases him and he was in a hole. Yeah, and then he he was in a hole and then he died and then at the funeral like is when things get even weirder. They get pretty weird. All these like neighborhood people that we've we never seen, never fucking in the whole to, fucking book ever, except the one lady, except the one lady, and they all show up and they're like, "Oh, he was, you know, so sweet and blah blah blah, whatever," and like he was so good at taking care of himself, and like it was, it was a whole lot of people saying that they knew him. Oh, and then at the funeral, yeah, then she like leaves the funeral, or er, hmm. Well, also, like, she goes out back to the shed because she's wondering why the brother-in-law's oh, yeah. not there. She's like, your grandpa just died, dude. And I don't know that I would trust anybody living in a shed. I can tell you with confidence that I would not trust anyone who's living in a shed. Anyway, so she went out and was like, your, your grandpa just died. Why aren't you here? And then, like, there was nobody there. There was nobody was there. it was just a deserted shed. She didn't say it to anybody because there was nobody there. Oh, fuck. I had a thought. No, okay. Did you? Because <laughs> I didn't. I did. I did. I was saying a thing and I got distracted by the cat. The whole time, like, Asa is, as the narration is going on, I was talking about these cicadas. And, like, I had to look it up because I knew. I that it was, knew, like, a thing. I knew it was a thing in Japanese culture. When they talk about cicadas, it was a thing. I couldn't remember the thing. So I Googled it. And apparently it is a thing that indicates, like, summer. Especially an especially hot summer. So I'm like, oh, okay. So maybe, and like, as the time was going on, I was like, oh, well, I think, I think <laughs> they're trying to get at whole like, um, oh, well, it's summer. And summer is like when. It's like a seasons of life kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And like, you know, in summer, like kids don't go to school. They're free. They do whatever they want. Party time. Hey. And I don't like. Know what that was. I <laughs> It's fine. It was a dance and I liked it. Normally you dance in these videos. It's not me. But also I had way fewer thoughts than Amber did about this book, so. I had so many thoughts about this book. <laughs> I'm too focused on the thoughts. I'll dance later. And then we get to the end. Mm -hmm. And in the end, she decides, because she wasn't working once they moved. Yeah, she just had quit her job and she was just like housewifing uh -huh. um, and not really bothering to even try to do anything else. Yeah. And so, like, at the end, she decides to get a job at the convenience store, previously mentioned. Mm -hmm. It was a 7-Eleven, I believe. Was it? I believe it was. Okay. I don't know that that's relevant, but I remembered it, so <laughs> I'm saying it. So she was riding home with the uniform that she went and just picked up to start her next, her work day the next like day. Like, the next day. And they were like, oh, nothing's ever going to happen. Only retirees live here. No but, kids. like, somebody has to sit at the register. Yeah. And... On her way home, she's talking, she's, like, meditating or thinking or yeah, musing over. Yeah, she's just, over. like, letting her, you know how, like, sometimes if you're either walking or driving or whatever, you just kind of or let taking your, a shower. Yeah, you just kind of let your thoughts, like, flow mm -hmm. through you. That's kind of where she was at, I think. Yeah. And so she's musing over the fact she just got a job, and she's, like, taking on that responsibility for being an adult or whatever. And during this whole ride home, she sees a cicada. And she just, like, runs it over. <laughs> First of all, cicada and a bike tire, they're, they're like, like this big. Yeah. It's, you have to have like really good aim. You have to like plan for that. Like that's a whole thing. <laughs> she made the decision to run that bitch over. And then she just kept on riding with it like stuck to her tire. So. Yep. And I have this theory. Dead now for sure. <laughs> yes. For sure dead now. And I have this theory that it's like the, the whole fucking thing is like this metaphor for her just, like, wanting to be a kid and not have responsibility. And then choosing to move on into adulthood. Yeah. By the then, conscious decision to, like, run over the cicada. Like, aggressively. But, like, yeah, yeah it just kind of ended. So, like, we didn't ever get any real resolution. It was just, like, nope. I'm going from the 7-Eleven now. I'm going to start work tomorrow. The cicada is dead. Fuck you. Bye. <laughs> so, uh, if you decide to read it, 
let us know what you think. Please do. Uh, otherwise, let us know what y'all have been up to. We haven't yeah. done this in a while. What uh -huh. are you reading? What do you think uh, would be interesting to see a drunk review of? What should we drink when we review it? That part. Uh, and other than that, I guess we should head out. Yeah. Right? So, you know, thanks for joining us. And, you know, if you're going to drink or read or anything, remember. Yeah. Please read responsibly. Read responsibly. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.